Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's have a look at another example of a second order non-homogeneous differential equation and how to solve it. So we have your second order differential equation, you know because the highest derivative in the equation is to the power 2. Our dependent variable in this case is y, your independent is t. You know it's non-homogeneous because it's equal to some function. Right? So we have to solve for this differential equation. So we know now, because it's non-homogeneous, we know that our answer is going to be equal to two parts. Your complementary function plus your particular integral. Okay. So let's have a look at what do we do for the complementary function. So for our complementary function, we know that you can write your equation... In terms of this is equal to zero so that can be written as ycf equals to zero so your auxiliary equation is going to be d squared plus one equals to zero right so now you want to find the roots of d and that is going to be squared equals minus one which means d is plus or minus the square root of minus 1 which is plus or minus j. That means because you have a complex root here you know that your complementary function has to have the form of e to the power the real part would be this power and the real part in this case is 0 times t a cos t b sine t right and remember here you see i almost made a mistake over here here your independent variable has to be here right in the arguments of cos and sine and that in this case is t not x like i almost did here right so that is going to be your complementary function and this e to the power naught is just one that means your complementary function is going to look like this right now for our particular integral we know that we need uh, d squared y pi plus y pi has to equal 4 cos of t so we need to choose a particular integral so that if you found the first derivative and your second derivative and you substitute it in the equation has to simplify down to 4 cos t so let y pi equal we know that there's a trigonometric function which means that your particular integral has to be made up of your trigonometric function cosine as well as sine because remember when you find the derivative of sine or cosine they flip between the two between one another so we have e c cos t d sine t right but if you look at this function as we have it here, right, and you look at your complementary function, right, you look at your complementary function here, you will see that your form is exactly the same, right? You might have different letters in front of the trig functions, but that doesn't matter. The form is the same. So you have a constant in front of your cosine, constant in front of cosine, constant in front of sine t and a constant in front of sine t in your trial function. So this one is not going to work. You can go ahead and try if you want, but you're going to get some answer that doesn't make any sense. So we need to change the form of this trial function into something that will work. And the way we do that is we change it like that. Right? So then our first derivative is going to be, here you have a product of functions, t times another product here. So we need to use our product rule for differentiation. So that's going to be the derivative of the first part times the second part, time plus the, the, the first part of the function multiplied by the derivative of your second part. So we're going to end up with c cos t 
to d sine t plus t and that's going to be minus c sine t d cos t right and then your second derivative is going to be that will be minus c sine t d cos t this again is a function or product sorry not a function but a product of functions so you have to use your product rule again plus minus c sine t d cos t plus t c cos t minus d sine t okay so now let's just neaten up that second derivative a bit because it looks a bit messy like that and a little bit long so then it becomes confusing okay so we have uh, minus c sine t cos t Right, that means that's going to be minus 2c sine t plus 2d cos t. And I might as well multiply this out. ct cos t minus dt sine t. Right? So that's what we've got there. That's our second derivative. Now we have to substitute in and then simplify. So if we substitute into let's make this one let's call this equation here one right let's just pull another page out you must always try and spread these things out otherwise if you write two on top of one another it just gets confusing and messy so if we substitute into one we need our second derivative so it is going to be minus 2c sine 2t 2d cos t minus ct cos t minus dt sine t plus ypi which is going to be ct cos t dt sine t and that has to equal for cos t right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to equate all the like terms because remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance out our equation right so that means that all the cosine terms have to add up to something all the sine terms have to add up to something and any constants you might have all like terms have to add up to whatever is on the other side of the equation so the first one i'm going to do is i'm going to look at my sine terms right and my sine terms in this case are it's that one uh, it's only that one from the looks of it yes so minus 2c has to equal to zero because there's nothing on the other side right which means that c has to be zero then my cos terms and in this case that is just going to be that one there so 2d has to equal to 4 which means that d has to be 2 right and let's see what happens to the other ones because you see here yeah, this this is t times cos t so that can't be part of your cosine terms because of the t in front of it right and you'll see here yeah, that those two add up to zero so your like term here is ct cos t ct cos t and those add up to zero minus dt sine t plus dt sine t add up to zero right so that means therefore your particular integral 
is going to be t times your c is 0 cos t and your d is 2 sine t which means it's going to be 2t sine t and then your overall solution we remember because you're working with a non-homogeneous differential equation it's made up of your complementary function plus your particular integral which in this case your solution is going to be a cos t b sine t plus 2t sine t Right? And that over there is going to be your general solution. Again, if you have initial conditions and you need to find your particular solution at this stage, you would then find what the values of A and B are. Right? I hope that's understandable to you. I'll see you next time.